Hey everybody, and welcome back to Show Play Seduce Me the Otome. Last time, um, magical incubi butlers are preparing the house for the party, so let's go see what's up with that. The hour of the house party arrived. In my mind, I kept double and triple checking the essentials for the party. Knowing my dad, he invited his business partners and the executives of the Anderson Company to show me off. I stood in front of my mirror in my room, staring at my form as a million thoughts ran through my mind. It was just a housewarming party, but at the same time it wasn't. It was my chance to show my dad that I was better than his expectations. It was a chance for me to see my parents as a woman. That, that doesn't really make much sense, but okay. It was my test to see if I really was really ready to live on my own. Well, not truly alone. I had the incubi to think, but even so, I didn't have any dad guiding me or my mom helping me through living alone. A knock on my door broke my thoughts, surprising me. Who is it? Hey, are you okay in there? Your parents should be here soon, so you should hurry getting ready. Oh, thanks, Peebles. Well, I'm ready, but... But what? I'm sure you look fine, Anderson. Just come on out. Okay. All right. I like your dress. As soon as I opened the door to the hall, I watched as Peebles and Susie's faces turned from smiles to complete awestruck stares. I like your dress too, Peebles. And your outfit, Suzu. What? Dude, you look hot. Thanks? Yeah, you look amazing. Where did you get that dress? I guess I probably found it in a closet somewhere. I've had it for a while. I just never had the chance to wear it. I figured I might as well bring it out now. I stepped out of my room and closed my bedroom door behind me. As I walked down the hall to the grand lobby, the incubi stood waiting for me at the bottom, all dressed to the nines as proper servants. They're color-coded, but not all of their suits match completely. Whoa! They really know how to dress well, don't they? They'd better. Yeah. I was slightly taken aback at how great the boys looked in uniform. Each had the poise of a perfect gentleman, even Sam. With his hands on his hips like that, I don't think so. I slowly began to climb down the steps with Suzu and Peebles behind me. The boys watched as I descended the staircase one step at a time, like knights waiting for their princess. I felt my face slightly flush, but I quickly shook my head to try and regain my thoughts. As I reached the last step, James offered his hand out to me and walked me down the final step, smiling. I think I could get off the stairs by myself. As beautiful as a princess, miss. Your compliments are really unnerving. You, you know that, right? Thanks. So, are you prepared for tonight? No. As ready as I'll ever be. I couldn't deny that I was nervous, but I had to try. This party was more than what it seemed, and I had done all that I could to prepare for it. Now it was all up to fate. The other boy smiled assuringly at me, which made me feel a little better about everything. I looked at my phone and marked the time. Almost right on cue, the doorbell rang. I gulped. I could practically feel my dad's aura from behind the door. Sam and Eric quickly rushed to the door and opened the double doors wide to reveal my parents, both dressed in their best. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. Oh, my. I didn't know your bequeathment came with servants. Nothing wrong with that. It was probably overlooked. Besides, who would deny good service? Exactly. Who would? I was completely shocked. My parents didn't question them? They didn't ask for verification or anything? I looked to the boys and noticed Sam and Eric staring intently at my parents. Were they using their powers on them? It had to be. There was no way they'd be okay with this otherwise. I guess the servants counted as belongings to the house. I think oftentimes that is the case. Maybe not in modern times, but... My mother quickly rushed to me and gave me a large hug. I hugged her back, inhaling her perfume. It had only been a couple days, but living away from the ones who raised me was hard. My mother soon let me go and looked at my outfit. <sighs> Gorgeous! You look so lovely. David, look at your daughter and tell her I'm right. 
I looked to my dad, who was looking around the lobby like an inspector. I stood my ground, waiting for him to look at me. When he did, he let out a small smile grace his lips. Your mother's right. You look like you're all grown up. Why, thank you. The world around me stopped as my heart pounded hard in my chest. Did my dad just compliment me? On his own accord? My mother was grinning ear to ear at his words. I was beyond speechless. Thank you, Daddy. However, his cold face quickly returned as he began to look around once again. I assume that you're ready, then, to impress the rest of the guests, correct? Of course. How could you think otherwise? You did raise me. What do you mean? The entire board from Anderson Toys is coming tonight. Even the vice chairman's son will be coming. All of them will be measuring your potential. I figured as much. My potential? To become CEO of the company. I knew it. Something was off about tonight, and now this party had become much more than I anticipated. No, you predicted this. I gulped silently, but I nodded in response. I looked to the incubi, but they were continuing to be servants for my father's approval. I looked behind me and saw Peebles and Suzu raise their thumbs at me for encouragement. I allowed out a small breath before feeling my body accept the situation. I felt a weight in my gut, but I had to hide it. As if time zoomed forward, all of a sudden the main hall of the lobby was full of guests. Men and women in formal or business attire showed up to meet me and see my new home. I didn't expect many to come, but I was once again surprised that night. I shook hands with many officials and executive members, putting on the professional face my dad trained me to have. I felt overwhelmed, but I hid it well behind a small smile and handshake. Many even asked me questions. I tried my best to reply as maturely as possible. I had to remember, say what they want to hear, not what you want to say. So, how do you feel living on your own at such a young age? It's amazing. It's been pretty good, actually. It's difficult being independent. I wish I were still I'm living- I'm so sorry about your grandfather passing away. It really hit all of us hard. I seriously did not click anything. Let me go redo that. Pretty good. I'm so sorry about your grandfather passing away. It really hit all of us hard. Thank you for your condolences. Do you have college plans? Yes, I do. I felt like the questions came up one after another. It was tough to answer some of them because they weren't about me. They were about the company. What do you think will happen with the company now that your grandfather has passed? It will get back on track soon. What do you think of the philanthropic policy the company has? It's a policy that reflects my own value, so I do personally you think, the think it's great. Should expand from just toys. Uh I don't think that makes sense. Eventually the question stopped and I was back to being my by myself. Peebles and Suzu were mingling in the crowds, and the Incubi were doing their jobs. So I was all alone in a room full of strangers. It was unnerving to think about, but at least I wasn't going... At least I wasn't being questioned left and right anymore. Suddenly, though, my mom pushed her way through the crowd to me, bringing along someone I didn't know. Honey, I'd like to introduce you to someone. This kind gentleman is the son of the vice chairman. Mom, you're not seriously trying to set me up on a date, are you? With my mother stood a man who looked only a couple of years older than me. He smiled and held out his hand to me, silently asking for my hand. Hi, I'm Andrew Lewis. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Anderson. Ah, <sighs> fine. As I placed my hand in his, he raised it to his lips and kissed over my knuckles. I felt my face burn slightly at the gesture. Andrew smiled at me before releasing my hand. I'm honored to be invited here. Wasn't my idea. My mother smiled at both of us, which made me slightly concerned. Why was she excited to introduce me to Andrew? So, um, you organized this party very well, Miss Anderson. I thank you, nervous young man. 
You're welcome. Praise is very much deserved. Andrew then chuckled nervously, bringing a soft fist to his lips to cover his laugh properly before smiling at me. I'm sorry if I seem a little forward. <laughs> I've just been excited to meet Harold Anderson's granddaughter. Why? Huh? Why? He used to talk about you all the time in the office on how you helped him refine his toys. I only attended meetings and heard all of the stories. You've helped a lot with the success of the company without having to actually work there. <laughs> I wonder if that's why I inherited this place. Because I helped. Oh, wow. I didn't know he talked about me. That would explain everyone's fascination with me and their rather personal questions. I looked to Andrew, who had a kind face to me. Something about him seemed off, and I didn't know what it was. He seemed to be hiding something. Whether it was good or bad, I was not able to find out. I felt someone walk up beside me, causing me to turn to them. Next to me was my dad, giving his cold stare to Andrew, who suddenly became tense. Of course, no matter how cold your dad is to you, he's always going to protect his little girl. So, you're Jared's son. You'd better be nice. Andrew's body twitched slightly. Whether it was fear or insult, Andrew looked locked to eyes with my father. I couldn't help but feel the tension between them. It irked me how fragile the air had become, enough to break at the wrong word. You're the one who wants to be the next CEO of the Anderson Co If he does a good job, I don't mind. Well... I stared at Andrew. This guy wanted to take my grandfather's place as CEO? I thought the vice chairman wanted the position. David, leave the poor boy alone. I'm merely testing the boy's conversational skills. Nothing wrong with that. He's not your son, you don't need to test him. Of course not, sir. And polite as well. Interesting. If you'll excuse me. Quickly, Andrew retreated away from my family into the crowd of people. Stay put, I think I need to talk to Dad. I watched as he disappeared into the crowd towards the back of the house. I was worried, but I gave him his space. He obviously needed it. Pah. <laughs> He's not CEO material. That's because you practically interrogated the young man. A little questioning shouldn't have bothered him. He's obviously not ready for any title in our company. I bit my tongue. I didn't want to make a scene with my dad. One wrong word and he'd lecture me in front of everyone. That was not something that I wanted at my housewarming party. I let out a sigh before looking at the clock. It was getting close to midnight, meaning that the party was going to end soon. I lowered my gaze out the window and saw a limo pull up. Huh? Whose limo is that? Hmm? Oh. That must be Lewis's car. You don't sound like you like him. I'll go get him. Stay with your father so you can escort your guests out together. That makes sense. Thanks, Mom. Yes, Mom. My mother left my dad and me to slowly escort the guests out. My dad held his simple smile as he thanked each person for coming. I did the same. Andrew quickly passed the doors before I could speak. Eventually, only Suzu Peebles, my parents, and the incubi were left. My dad suddenly walked over and placed a hand on my shoulder with a smile. I stared up at him, a wave of confusion washing over my face. What? You did good tonight. I'm proud. That is such a weird thing for you to say to me. Uh, oh, thank you, Dad. Keep it up and you'll be a good CEO. I'd better be. Oh, right. All right, your mother and I have to leave. I'm sure Naomi and Suzu need to leave as well. Just because it's Saturday doesn't mean you should stay up all night. Well, we could have a sleepover. I mean, it is my house and I'm an adult now, so why not? Uh, oh, right. Thanks for having us. It was a great party. Are you seriously leaving? We'll come visit tomorrow or something. All right? No, stay. Come on. Right. See ya. Good night, sweetie. Come visit us soon. Uh, okay. Will do. All four of my remaining guests left the building, all but my dad waving back to me. With the last of the guests gone, I sighed and sat on the staircase, exhausted. Whew, <sighs> that was tiring. It's not like you had to do any work, though. I had to do mental work. Give her a break, man. She was getting interrogated left and right. 
Thank you. She handled herself the best she could. As expected, princess. Seriously, you need to stop calling me that. Since you're exhausted, why not head to bed? We can clean up. I think I should help. It is my house. And you're not staying forever. I need to learn the ropes. Ugh. Hush, Sam. Are you guys sure? Positive. It shouldn't take long. Ho ho ho! It didn't take long to find you little shits after all. I felt a hot shudder run down my spine. The voice from my dreams echoed through the air into my ears. I looked around, panicked, alongside the incubi. James placed a hand on my shoulder, trying to remain calm. Don't worry. No one will hurt you. Is it because I'm the imaginary one? Oh, that would be so cool. Are you sure? Are you really sure? All of us shot our heads towards the door, finally pinning down the direction of the voice. The doors quickly swung open, revealing a sight I would have never expected to see. Skin red as blood, eyes black, and gold piercing into mine, roughened up clothes and a pistol in his hand. I saw a monster. <laughs> I covered my mouth not to scream at the sight. Dried blood covered the bandana around his neck as he smirked at me and the boys around me. Beside the red-skinned man was a similar-looking woman in matching thug-like clothes. Aw, oh, what's the matter, boys? You really didn't think I wouldn't find you, did you? Did they? I hoped you would, you piece of- All of a sudden, the man raised his gun at Sam's face and instantly pulled the trigger. We all gasped in shock, instinctively expecting to see a bullet run through Sam's face, but- What? What the fuck? I don't know. Wh what? Even Sam is surprised. What should have been a headshot ended with a loud but empty blank shot. The pistol echoed its empty shots as the man grew more and more pissed, pulling the trigger over and over in aggravation. Should have checked the contents of the gun before you started pulling a trigger. Seriously. Luckily for my ears, it became quieter after its first shot. Why the fuck won't you work? Maybe it's jammed. This place is protected. By what? What did you say, shrimp? This place has a seal, protecting it from hellborn magic. What? What the fuck is that supposed to mean? I'm just as confused as you are, man. Ah! The man growled and threw his gun at Sam, who was able to dodge it in time. The pistol bounced off the ground a couple of times before sliding further away, hitting the wall in a final stop. As it stopped moving, the gun faded into black flame that disappeared into the air. The previous owner had this place protected by magic, Malix. How do you guys know this? Malix. That was his name. His existence resonated in my memory from the dream I had. However, I looked to Matthew at the same confusion as Malix did. I'm sure I said, but I can't take that name seriously. M-A-L? Mel? Means bad? That is a very common prefix to a villain name. This place is protected by... magic? <laughs> it would seem that your grandfather had some sort of protective barrier around this house. From the looks of it, it only disables Hellborn magic. Why not all magic? Malix's face grew to that of extreme anger, his fist tightening as he was crushing a stress ball. Then what's stopping me from dragging your asses out and shooting you then? I have no idea. Out of pure instinct, I stepped forward and placed myself between Malix and the boys. With no power, Malix wasn't going to fight. I took that chance to stand up to him instead of being powerless like I was in the dream. Get out of my house! Malix growled at me, walking right up to me and leaning close to my face. I glared back, feeling my courage skyrocket. And that courage will continue to skyrocket in the next episode.